y'all welcome i am hope at crafty hope and i am about to work on week 12 of my mixed medium prompt card project that is called hashtag crafty hope prompts if you are new here i'm gonna explain real quick for you basically i realized that there were 52 cards in the deck and 52 weeks in a year so i made up a list of 156 prompts that's three prompts a week that i am drawing each week and then using those prompts to alter a playing card like these and then adding those prompts to the other side of the card so that when I get done I will have a full deck of prompt cards that I can either draw one and have those three prompts or draw two or three of them and combine them in some way but basically just some prompt cards and Later in the week, I will use these three prompts, and on Saturday, I will reveal a project, a larger project that I used on those three prompts. I've done different things, something simple like art journal, junk journal pages, some tags. I've made assemblage pieces, and uh, I think my first one, I even made some jewelry in addition to my project. So today is Monday, which means it's time to draw my new three prompts, and I'll um, gives some options as well. You are welcome to play along. There are a lot of different ways to play. You can take the three prompts that I've drawn, make your own prompt card or just an altered playing card. You can do a junk journal page or an art journal page. You can down below in the description, I have a link to the full list of 156 prompts and you can pull your own prompts. So lots of different ways to play. I just ask if you're going to play along, use the hashtag crafty hope prompts so I can see what you make. All right, guys, I am going to pull these. I'm trying to make these introductions a little bit shorter. So let's see if we can do it. All right, so for week 12, our first prompt is going to be <gasps> Sparkle. That seems kind of appropriate for the holidays, doesn't it? All right, so Sparkle can be any kind of glitter, anything, obviously. Tinsel or maybe even a gold or silver ink would have a little bit of sparkle to it. But I'm thinking something maybe a little more shimmery. I've got what are those things? It's a Jelly Roll Stardust pen that has some sparkle to it or just some glitter or maybe some washi tape with glitter in it. Um, I'm trying to think what else would have sparkles. I've got some kind of resin element. I've got buttons that have like sparkles on them. Rhinestones ooh, and beads all have sparkles. So sparkle can go any all kinds of ways. You could even use a quote. I think there are quotes that say like leave a little sparkle wherever you go or don't let anyone ever dull your sparkle or some great little inspirational quotes that you could put on there using this word sparkle as your prompt. Okay so that's number one. Number two watercolor. All right I, I am okay with that. So that's pretty straightforward. I am going to probably just use my watercolors. You can use two watercolors. You can get some cheapo ones from the dollar store. You could use watercolor markers. Um, but basically, yeah, I think that's pretty straightforward watercolor. So I'm going to move on from there. If, I, if you think of something that or find that too hard, let me know and we can brainstorm. I'm going to mix these up just a little bit get something else let's see. I can't ah, they're stacked I don't like when they get stacked so let's see can I get just one okay and cut Ooh. okay y'all hmm that makes me think of was it week one that I had hole punch and so cut kind of thing makes me think of the same thing where you would cut something out but you could fussy cut an image to put down so I could stamp something and watercolor it and fussy cut it. You could cut a portion out of whatever it is you're working on. You can, what else can cut be? Um, a die cut. Ooh, that's, that's one. So there's, there's a couple of options there. All right. So I'm going to think on this for just a minute. I'm going to pull my card out and I'll be back in just a minute for us to use sparkle, watercolor, and cut to create a altered playing card prompt card thing. 
this one's a puzzler y'all <laughs> I have a lot of ideas so I'm gonna go over what direction I'm going real quick and then I'm gonna get to it hopefully it will come together <sighs> while I was gathering things I thought of sparkle and I realized I have all of these stickles lots of, lots of them <laughs> lots of these stickles and I thought well that sparkle I, I could use that I did pull out that jelly roll stardust pen we'll see if I use that but I also realize a lot of embossing powders have like a sparkle in them. This one is actually named Christmas. And I was thinking I would do something kind of Christmas themed. So that's the direction I'm going. For watercolor, of course, I just pulled out, or I pull it out, a set of, of my watercolors here. So there's that. But I was also thinking as far as cut, I may just do some stamping, like I said, and cut something out. So I may, for my project later, I may do something a little more intensive, but I've got some Christmas stamps here that I pulled out that I like, and I'm kind of just toying with all of these ideas. The first thing I want to do is cover my card. I think I'm going to do my base collage like I usually do, and we'll see where that goes. I've also pulled out, what did I pull out that I might could stamp on, but I haven't decided. This is some sticky back canvas that I could cut my stamp out of, or I've got, uh, this is just called, what is it called? It's from You Create, and I think it's just a paint pad, but it's kind of heavy, it makes me, I love this stuff. I will try to link it below if I can find it. I get it at, well, I have been getting it at my grocery store. I don't know if they still have it, because I bought a bunch of it. I haven't needed to buy it anymore. Okay, I'm gonna get started because I will I will just keep chatting with y'all if if I don't. Okay. As I said, I'm going to start this with some collage. I am using Mod Podge on top of my card. It has a very slick surface and it has to pretty much be collaged on in order for anything later to stick onto it. The other option is to either gesso it or sand it down, but I'm just I'm just going in with some collage. <laughs> and these are just a random assortment of pages and I'm I've sped this up quite a bit, but I'm using as you can see a really monochromatic color scheme because I didn't really know where I was going to go with this other than it was going to be Christmassy. So I get one side done and I think I go ahead and dry that with my heat tool and then I'll flip it over and finish the other side using a lot of the same or similar kind of papers. And I don't have an intention when I do this about which side's going to have the prompts and which side's going to be my decorative side. I just kind of do it and then I'll decide once I get it done. <laughs> it's just, just go. So yeah, you can see I'm just, my big thing is to try to cover up as much of the image that's on the card as possible. I know there are a lot of people out there that do altered playing cards and they do keep some of that, at least one side open so you can see that it was a card. I, to me, I don't care. <laughs> I just, I want it covered. If there's a space to be covered with something I can decorate, I'm going to do it. So I've trimmed that down a little bit and dried it again. And I'm going to go ahead and come in with my Christmas stamps I've got here. I really like this. It's like a piece of holly. And I've got my stays on and then that paint pad paper there. And so I'm just going to stamp a couple of these real quick. I'm using stays on because it is permanent. And I knew that I wanted to do the watercolor on this. So I didn't want the thing to move in any way. And isn't that a pretty stamp, y'all? I had... I don't have, it's funny, I have a ton of Halloween stamps, but I don't really have that many Christmas ones. I don't know why. I, I just don't make a lot of cards or anything, I suppose, and a lot of the stamps and stuff I have are more, I don't know, more decorative. I, that I don't know. I just don't have a lot of Christmas stuff. So I cut this down so it wasn't so cumbersome to work with, and I'm pulling out those watercolors. It's, yeah, and I... I always forget because, you know, 
I don't know if you've used watercolors like this before. Sometimes what's dried in the pan doesn't look exactly the same as what you pick up. It's weird. So I was trying to figure out which color I wanted. So I was just mixing them together. And I had far too much water on that paintbrush. Because it just, when I start painting it here onto my stamped image, it, it's pooling a little bit. So I wasn't super high. You'll see I'll dab some of it away in a little bit. And I'm going to use a couple different colors on here, not really being precise about any of it, just just kind of playing with the idea of watercolor. I'm hoping that with my project, I can maybe do a bit more with the watercolor prompt for this. I'm, I'm thinking on what some of the other things I could use for these three prompts might be. But I think I've, I've come up with, a, you know, thinking about the embossing or the, yeah that kind of thing and finding those stickles and y'all I showed y'all like five bottles of sticker of stickles I have like I don't know six more than that <laughs> I just pulled those out to show you that I had them so I yeah and y'all uh, the stickle stuff I believe is just kind of a glitter glue so if you've got like a a glitter glue of any kind that might could work for your sparkle if you're gonna use the same prompts I use so as you can see, I have got, I'm just painting them green. How boring is that? So <laughs> I know it's not super inventive, but I am using watercolors in this. I started to dry this, but then I, yeah, I decided it had too much water. So I'm going to pick up some of that extra water off of it super quick. And then I think do I set it aside? I decide to go ahead and put some of the watercolor on once one of the sides of my card. And I decide since I put green on the, on the holly there, I wanted to do red, but I was trying to figure out which of my reds was a true red and it didn't look like any of them. I mean, look how pink that is. So pink, right? And they all looked exactly the same. I was like, what is going on? So I'll try to blot that up a little bit. And I'll grab another, I'll grab my Jane Davenport Brights because it's got a color in there called Ladybug, I think, that I thought might be more red. But no, when I put it down, it's pink too. <laughs> At least it looks pink. When it dries, it's a little less pink. But y'all, I was, I don't know, I couldn't get the red that I wanted. Crazy, right? So now I'll try both of those. So I've brought watercolor into this now. Yay, yay. And I am going to fussy cut, like seriously fussy cut, one of these holly branches. I will skip ahead because I am not going to make you watch me fussy cut this whole thing. It was a bit of a pain because of all those tiny little points on the holly. But I knew those points needed to be included because that's kind of what makes holly holly. That's, yeah part of the reason I don't care for holly itself. I have some out in my yard with the red berries and everything, but it is so pokey. I hate it. So to, for the red berries, I decided that's why I was going to bring my stickles in. And this isn't actually stickles. This is, I don't know what brand it, I, I don't know where I got it, but it's some of that glittery glitter glue stuff. So I used it to make the berries on my on my holly stamp and I thought that would be a great way to bring that sparkle in and just be a little bit of a touch of something and I'm playing around with these so I I'm going to cut this other one out but not super fussy just kind of around the leaves I'll go back in later and fussy it a little bit more but not near as much as I did that first one because <laughs> that was y'all it was not fun but I wanted to cut this down so I um, could put the, the red on it as well and let it dry because I knew that was going to take a little while to dry. So while that is sitting there drying, I've pulled out Distress Ink in, what is it, Mowed Grass or Mowed Lawn or so? I'll, I'll put it below. And I'm going to do that embossing. I've got this cute little Santa stamp and... I've yeah stamped him with just that Distress Ink and I'm using the embossing powder that's called Christmas that's got the red and green in it and like I said it's sparkle as well. I'm not great with embossing. I should have used some of that de-static stuff I think. I've got a little bit of it but it's not something I do often so I didn't think about it. But I've got that onto my card and then I will grab my heat tool and just heat that up. I will say that this doesn't 
do the whole melty changey like a lot of embossing does so it was hard for me to tell if it was done or not and I just kind of thought okay I guess it's done and then I'm gonna add a little bit of the watercolor also on the card just the green here um, across the top where I was gonna I knew it was gonna probably add a sentiment and then across the bottom as well for just some grass I guess at Santa's feet and then I'll dry that just so I can keep on moving <laughs> keep it going so here's that sentiment it's just a stamp that says Merry Christmas and again I'm just I'm gonna use the stays on because it's what I used before this first impression I get is not great I didn't I think one of the letters wasn't filled anyway some of it was darker than the other so I'll grab a different piece of paper and do it again <laughs> yeah so I sh could have brought out my stamping platform but that always just seems like you know having to drag something else out so I didn't and I'm using much too big of an acrylic block I just I always have that one around because it's usually big enough for all of my stamps. I've recently learned that you really should be using one that's an appropriate size for your stamp so you don't get some of the rockiness and uneven stamping. But lesson learned. So I've torn around this and that becomes an issue because I start to realize that on the Santa side, I haven't cut anything <laughs> because I have torn it. So it's not going not gonna to be a huge deal because I end up fussy cutting one of the hollies that I'll end up adding on that side as well because I have cut it. So I'm going to think a little bit harder about the cut. That's, yeah, that's a tough one. So I've torn down the Merry Christmas. I'm looking at it. I feel like it needed something around on the edges. So I think I'm going to ink it up here in just a second with that Distress ink that's sitting there. I think that's what I'm going to do. Yeah, going back and forth. I think that's where I started to realize I hadn't cut anything. So I'm going to ink this up. And I know that it's kind of silly. I've got that green background already on there. Why would I put the green that doesn't add anything to it? But I think for me it helped, helped it meld a little bit into the background. And I'll use my Uhu glue stick to just go ahead and stick it down and stop futzing with it. Just get it down, Hope. <laughs> and Santa himself, though he was in boss and everything, and maybe I should have used the black ink instead of the green ink so he would stand out a bit more. And that's, again, lesson learned. So I grabbed, this is a, a Sharpie rollerball pen, and I am going to trace different aspects of him. So some of his, so he's highlighted and shadowed a bit more. It's not really a shadow because it's not on like half of it. But I wanted him to have some kind of outline. And it, with that little quick outline, he's already standing out so much better. So I'm going to go in with just a few more of the details around some of the this the embossing and the embossing helped because it was raised and I just tried to take it slow y'all sometimes when I trace things I get a little wonky like end up going right over my image or off the side of the page those kind of things but I took it slow and steady and concentrated on what I was doing instead of going all willy-nilly so yeah I think I'm going to finish up a couple areas because I didn't want him to seem too uneven. But I didn't. Some of those finer things around in his face, like his eyes and his nose, I didn't, I didn't mess with because I was afraid I would just mess something up there. All right. So I'm going to frame this up by inking up the edges with my stays on, just bringing that back in again because it's something I've already used on the page. And I have that that holly there that I'm trying to decide where it's going to go. Like I said, it has been cut. So that way I have something that has been cut for my, <laughs> for that side of the card. And I'm using this Nouveau adhesive. I knew I needed something because that paper is kind of heavy. And with the stickles, it was even heavier. And I know I stuck, use my Uhu for the Merry Christmas part, but I felt like with the, the weight of the, the glitter glue, it was going to be, yeah. It needed something more. So I'm going to turn it to my more functional side with my prompts on it. And the first thing I'm doing is cutting down the words a little bit so that they don't take up too much room on the card because words like cut don't need to take up a whole lot of room. 
and I had a vague idea of what I wanted to do on the other side. I've got that, that holly there. Yep. Like that. And I've got my words, but I'll, I want to add a little more sparkle. So here's where I'm going to fussy cut a little bit more on this side. Like I said, I'm not going to make you watch that. It's not as exact as that other one, but it's, it still took a little time. And I'll use the Nouveau again and just put it in the corner. There's something about holly in the corners of things. Even as a kid, I used to draw holly berries like in the corners of papers for school or if I wrote a little poem or something I for some reason I put holly with berries on it and so and it was always in the corners so that's yeah both of both sides of this are getting that treatment <laughs> just something I've always done so I'll bring in these this gold stickles and I am going to just accent each corner of the of the prompts with the uh, just a dot of the stickles so it looks like it has been tacked down like little thumbtacks or something there and I'll put it aside to dry but pretty quickly realize that I want more of that gold sparkle oh wait first I'm going to do some scribbling in the background because I knew something was missing and I couldn't quite put my finger on it I was thinking I was done there um, and I was like, okay, now I'll frame it up real quick with some more of this. So I'm going to do that. And I put it aside to dry and realized I wanted more sparkle on there. So y'all, I'm going to take the gold stickles there and you'll see. And just dab it onto, yeah, because the little dots I put there are not. What am I doing now? Oh, I decided I needed some darkness. That's what I decided. Y'all, I don't even know. And so I used a Stabilo all pencil just on those two blank corners and we'll activate that real quick, which I really do think helps some, but here's where I add the stickles and rub it around and take it to dry. And y'all, I end up liking my functional side in the end with this addition more than my decorative side. I promise you, I like this side so much more. <laughs> it's crazy. All right, so that is it. I will be back um, Christmas Eve to have a project for you using these three prompts. If you like this, make sure to give me a thumbs up, leave a comment if you have any questions, and subscribe, y'all. Ah, I will see y'all soon. Thanks for watching. Bye. <laughs>